Hello there, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. It's a free website for all things imaging. And in this video, we're gonna continue with our 3D text by piling up 3D text and then taking it from Photoshop into Adobe Project Felix and creating a scene that looks like this. Okay, let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop and the first thing I need to do is create a new document. And I'm gonna just choose Postcard here in Landscape and click Create. Now, if you've been watching my 3D text videos so far, a lot of what I'm gonna do is a little bit of a recap. I'm not gonna to go too slowly. So uh, if you haven't watched the previous videos, you may want to go back a little bit. All right, I'm gonna create some text and then create the party. So just as we have done before, the party, and then click the tick. And I'm actually gonna transform this, Control or Command T, and just bring that all in there. And I don't want the party, maybe just party. There we go, take out the, there we are. And then transform that, I'm gonna make it quite long. There we are. Good, click the tick. And now I'm going to make this into a 3D extrusion, just as we have done before. And I'm gonna bring the extrusion down quite a bit as well to somewhere around maybe 210. I might type that in, there we go, about 210, there we go. That's all I want to do right now. So I'm gonna leave that as is. You'll notice that I'm not touching any of the materials here and I won't be doing that in Photoshop. I'll be doing that in Felix in just a moment. Okay, but for now, that's good. I might change the text color to something like red, just so as I can see it a bit clearly. Right, let's create some more text. And I'm gonna put the big. So there we go, we're gonna go the big party and click the tick. All right, let's bring this down into place-ish and control command T. Let's bring that down. And I want it sort of squashed as well. There we go, bring that up. There we are. Okay, something along those lines. Cool. All right, click the tick. Create an extrusion. Take the extrusion down. Again, I'm gonna go maybe 200 this time. Just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. Ooh, not that far, there we go. And I'm gonna change the color of the text to maybe a green. Again, just so as I can see it at this point. Now the problem we have is that we've got two separate 3D objects which have two separate 3D planes. What I'd like to do is have them as one object with one ground plane. To do that, really quite easy. If I go to layers and I select all the layers that I want, in my case I'm using the control or the command key to select the second one, and then I come to 3D and then merge 3D layers. There they go, they're all into one layer. And if I come back into my 3D panel here, you can see that party and the big are now part of the same scene. Cool. Now I can see them both up here in my panel. So if I go and get my move tool, I'll be able to make sure that they line up really well. And that's not too bad at all. There we go, something like that. Now I'd quite like them to sit one on top of the other. And I don't think they're quite doing that here. In fact, I'm going to bet my life that they're not. And the reason for that is you can see that the T is nicely done there, but the B definitely isn't. If I go to the scene, I can then twizzle this around and you'll probably be able to see there's a bit of daylight under there. What I can do is I can actually come with my move tool, select the big, and then come to my coordinates. So we've got an X, a Y, and a Z. The X is along, Y is up, so Y, Here's the move tool. So we'll go into the Y, we'll select that. And what I'll do is I'll press shift and the down key and I'll do that a few times and you can see that gap closing up quite nicely. There we go. I'm gonna pack back onto my scene and have a spin around and see what it looks like. And that's not too bad at all. However, I know that the B and the I are not sitting square with the G. Now the easy way to solve this is to click on the big again and then come up to the text icon here and choose edit source. Now I'm going to go onto the layers, press control or command, and then click on the thumbnail to put a marquee around the big. And this is exactly what we did in the last video. I come up to image and then down to crop. 
and that's cropped it along. Now we can see straight off the bat here, if I control or command D, that in fact the G is uh, sitting further down on the line than the rest of the letters. Now what I could do is knock these down one point, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along, get my text here, and I'm just going to highlight the G, come into my character panel, and I'm going to say make this one, uh, let's go for, oh no, not that one, let's go for, so it's 48.94, let's go for 47.94, and it should be the same size as everything else. Then let's go ahead, select the text, everything else into my character panel and then this little icon here that's the baseline and I can just drop that by one pixel for the other letters. Now we have the big absolutely square everything sitting on that baseline as it should be. So a little bit of a, a fiddly bit but it works really really well. Let's do the controller command again and go and crop that again and there we go. Controller command D to deselect there we go, and in fact, look, the G is still a little bit too big, but in this case, we're not really gonna notice it. We'll notice it at the bottom because there'll be a gap between the letters, but we won't really notice one point at the top. So I'm happy to go along with this right now. Let's close that and save it. And then there it is right up there. Let's bring that back down again. But this time it should fit nicely on there. There we go. Shouldn't have any gaps at all. There we go. Let's go on to my scene, rotate that a little bit. Oh, that wasn't a bad guess, was it? I think I've got that about bang on. There we go. Okay, maybe just a little bit too low. I could be sat here fiddling around with this for the rest of the day. I don't want to bore you, so let's uh, just very quickly see how we're doing there. Okay, that B looks a bit too low. There we go. All right, let's go on to the scene. That's better, that looks nice, good. So a little gap in the G, oh, it could well be. All right, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna deal with that as well. So let's go on to the Y again and just knock that down just a tiny, tiny bit. There we go, back onto scene. All right, that's looking a bit better. It's still just a little bit above, but I think we'll get away with it. All right, so just as we did in the last video as well, we're going to go on to party and go to 3D and then split extrusion so that we can deal with each letter in turn. And I'm going to deal with the P first and I'm going to bring that out and rotate it. Now when I see this in my final piece, I know that this wants to be sort of at this kind of angle. We're going to be looking at it from this kind of angle. So I don't want to turn these around too far. And also I don't want to move them too far away because I want to make sure that the big will sit on top. While I'm turning these around, I'm going to take off the big just to make sure that they're not bumping into each other. And in fact, there we go, I have already done that. There we go, let's bring that one that way a little bit. There we go, and the R. Cool, and I'll rotate that a little bit. Push that back and out. And the T. Move the Y out of the way for a second. There we are. And the Y. And there we go. Looking good. Let's turn on the big, make sure that that's somewhere square. Yeah, not bad. I'll turn it around just a little bit. Just so it makes a bit more sense to do it. And then move it along so it's sitting on the top. That's causing a little bit of a shadow there, which is nice. Okay, I'm going to say that's good. I'm happy with that. I could probably fiddle around with it a little bit more, but I'm going to say we're good to go. All right, now, I'm not doing anything with any of the materials here. I'm going to leave that to Felix. So I'm going to go to 3D, and then I'm going to export 3D layer. Now you can see here that I've got a 3D file format. And I click on that, and the one I want is Wavefront OBJ. So I click on that. Now I get this little warning down the bottom here that says, uh, are you sure this is gonna be okay because you won't be able to print very well from this? That's okay, we're not doing any 3D printing. I can just click okay and off it goes. I'm gonna call this the big text and save. And that's saved. So now I can go into Project Felix and open that up. And when I do that, you can see that we've got this uh, new project 
create a new project and we get a 3D scene. The first thing I want to do is open a background. I've got a background already waiting for me. I've created a folder for everything. What I'm going to do is go to File and Import Images Background. I'm going to find my image. There we go. It's come from Adobe Stock. I click OK and in it comes. There we go. So it's going to load it. It's going to analyze it. It's going to see if it can find a horizon. When it does, it tells me there that it's found the horizon. I'm going to go to Crop to Fit to Scale to Fit and then align camera to image. Now you can see that it has indeed found the horizon and it's done the perspective plane for that. Now it doesn't have to have a horizon on the image. It can be a room, it can be the beach, it can be anywhere you like. In this case, I'm using something with an horizon so we can see it better. Okay, so we can move this around if we wanted to. It's got it about bang on, so I'm not going to worry about that. So let's go to file and import 3D model. We know where we've saved it, and I'm gonna click open. Sure enough, there it is, really big in the scene. So I'm gonna to come to edit and zoom to fit all, and there it is, the big party. Now half of it seems to be missing, and that's because that's below the ground plane. So we need to get the move tool and move it up. There we are. And then I can get the scale tool and I can scale it down. There we go, I'm gonna scale this quite away. There we go. Because now I need to get the move tool and move it into the hut. I'm still way too big, so let's get the scale tool and scale that down even further. Here we go. And move it forward. Oops, I'm scaling it there, I don't wanna do that. Get the move tool and move it forward. There we go. I do want to scale it now to be a bit bigger. There we go. And then I can rotate it as well, just so it fits in my scene. There we go, the big party. Now if that's all I wanted to do, all I've got to do now is go to render and click render. You see I've got a quality setting here highest, high, medium, and low. I'm gonna to stick to low at the moment. And I can also choose whether it's a PSD or a PNG. I'm gonna choose a PSD and click render. Then we'll get a representation of the scene come up. Unlike the way we do it in Photoshop, we don't see the blue box, but we do see it sort of coming together. This blue bar over here will keep zipping across for about 20, 25 seconds, and then it will start plodding its way along. A scene like this will take maybe seven, eight minutes to render fully, but we can see how it's all coming together really nicely. Okay, I'm gonna stop that for now, because what I want to do is add some image-based lighting. Now, if you were with me before, you'll understand image-based lighting is lighting from the environment, and Felix allows us to do that as well. So if I go to background, you'll see create light from image. All I've got to do is click that. It takes the background image, and it creates our image-based lighting from that based on the image as well. It's absolutely incredible. Okay, there we go. It's applied it to the scene. Let's go and render this out again. And again, it's gonna take about 20 seconds for it to, to sort of click in and we see roughly what's going on. Okay, there we go. So now we're getting some sort of lighting from the image. Still a bit dull though, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add some texture to that or some material. So I'm gonna come back to design. And you see down the bottom left here, we've got all models, lights, and materials. Materials is what we're after. And we've got all kinds of materials that we can add to any of our 3D objects. There's wooden ones, there's metallic ones, and the ones we're gonna use are the plastic. So I can get the hold of the white plastic here, I can drag that up and just drop it onto my text. Now from time to time, we might find that we get just one of the triangles that make up the text. All we we'll do is just do it again and it should then appear. Okay, and you can see how it's already starting to shine here. It's starting to pick up some of the background there. It works incredibly well. 
Okay, I'm going to scooch down just a little bit because it's these plastic colours next that I want for party. And remember, we split the extrusion for this, so they are individual objects as far as Felix is concerned. So if I get the blue and I drop that on, it will change the blue, excuse me, it will change the P to this blue. I'm going to change the uh, A to a green. Let's try that again. There we go. Uh, orange R. One more, here we go, purple. It doesn't usually happen this often, I'll be honest, so let's uh, stick with it. And then a red Y. Good, happened every single time there, didn't it? So there we go, we've got this reflective text now. We could go and do a quick render again and make sure that everything's looking the way we want it to. It's another 20 seconds you gotta wait, you know, it depends if you want to do that or not. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be reasonably happy with this. I might wanna make sure that it's actually on the ground plane. Okay, but as far as the reflections go and everything else, it's looking really nice. You can see that that T there is picking up the R actually in its reflection. Really, really nice. Works really, really well. Okay, let's stop that, click okay. Okay, I'm back to design and I am gonna make sure that that is on the ground plane just by taking it down and so it starts to disappear. You can see that I missed it by quite some way, I think. All right, let's take you back a bit. And then come down until we start. Oh, we really did miss it. Take it down until it disappears. There we go. And then bring it forward. All right. And let's uh, bring that back up again. So I was just concerned that I wasn't getting any... Um, shadows on the floor there. So that's why... I kind of had an idea that it wasn't on the ground plane. Let's just doubly make sure now. There we go, it disappears. And then I can bring it back up again. And I am gonna do a quick render. I won't make you watch this one all the way through. There we go. And there we go, just after 12, 13 seconds, I can see the shadows much better. And I can see some more reflections uh, in there as well. That's working out a lot better. Good, I'm gonna stop that. Good. I'm now happy with the big party. Now I'm gonna add some elements into this. The first thing I'm gonna do is add in a beach ball. So if I come over to models and I go all the way down, you can see all these different things that are built into Project Felix from the outset. And one of them is indeed a beach ball. So I'm gonna, I can either double tap it or I can drag it onto the scene. I'm gonna drag it onto the scene and there it is. All right, let's pull it forward. And let's just close this window down just a little bit and then bring that across. Now again, we'll be able to see if it's hitting the ground plane as to whether it disappears or not. And it does, just about there. So let's bring that forward. Now I want to rotate this, it looks a bit square. Now unfortunately with this one, when I rotate it, we start to rotate it from uh, off the side, but that's okay, we can deal with that in just a second. There we are. And then back onto the move tool and then bring that up and then bring it forward and bring it across, down until we start to lose it. There we go. Maybe a little bit further across and down just so we can see the word party there. Okay, good. All right, I'm happy with that. You can already see that there's reflections of the beach hut and of the sea already in the beach ball. That looks amazing. Now I'd like a wine bottle to be buried in the sand over here, but I think that beach ball is maybe going to be a bit too big, so let's reduce that a little bit and bring it down. Ah, there we go. There we are. All right, so I want the bottle to be buried in the sand. Now there is no bottle, wine bottle, inside of Felix as standard, but you can go over to Adobe Stock uh, it just so happens that I've got Adobe stock loaded here and there's all kinds of 3D objects. So just tap on the 3D and then search for whatever you want. And there's just a mass of stuff. You can see that I've been already looking through and there's plenty of wine bottles, books and boxes and cogs and all kinds of stuff. There's also some really nice materials as well. I do like this cherry. I might pick that one up a bit later. And the more importantly, these materials are free. So go ahead, fill your boots. 
There's also some lighting so you can make your own image based lighting from these as well. Lots and lots for you to pick up. And when you download that, it'll come in as a zip file. And it turns out that I've already got one. So there's my zip file, Adobe Stock 13463-806. If I double tap that, it will open up and we can see inside here that we've got some materials, we've got the labels there, um, everything that we need for our 3D scene. So I'm going to go back to Felix and I'm going to go to File and Open 3D Model or Import 3D Model. Go to my folder there. There it is. And I'm going to click Open. And in it comes. And once again, just like the beach ball, I can start doing whatever I need to do with this. Okay, pretty sure that I would have edited out a bit there and maybe gone to black because what I was doing was just wheedling this into place here. I'm now going to scale this up. There we go, scale it to it's nice and big. You see, I'm just clicking on that triangle in the middle and then I'm going to move it whoop, into place. So move it, and I'm gonna just make sure that it's sort of behind the text so I can then move it across and it all stays sort of in perspective. I can rotate a little bit, there we go and then move it and move it into the sand and we should know when it's disappearing. There we go. So we can actually watch it disappear into the sand. I'm not sure that's exactly where I want it. Let's go there. Okay, there, that's better. There we go. So now we've got the beach ball and we've got the bottle in the sand. Cool, let's render that out. Click yes. Okay, let's have a look, see how that's looking. I'm, I'm quietly confident that I'm going to like this. So we've got our the big party text that we imported from Photoshop. We've added a beach ball from the objects that are built into Project Felix and we've imported a bottle from Adobe Stock and their new 3D stock as well. And that all looks pretty good. Now, this is gonna be a Photoshop layered document. And it's gonna take five to seven minutes for it to render out fully, even in low quality. So it's time to put the kettle on. I'll see you back here in about five to seven minutes with a nice cup of tea. So there we go, bang on five minutes. And we've got a rendered scene. And what we can see here is we've got the beach ball reflected in the word party. We've got the beach hut reflected in the bottle, the sea and the sand all reflected in the text. It looks great, and that's with low quality. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna render that out as high quality, I think, next. And then what I might do is just come along and add a mask to the bottom of the uh, bottle here, just to roughen up that a little bit, just to make it finished off. But that's really all I need to do to this to make it final, as far as I'm concerned. All right, I'm gonna go to low. I'm gonna change it to highest, much slower. That's fine, and I'm going to go render. Okay, and you will see the finished version in just a few seconds. I'm Eric Reno, thank you very much for joining me here on this video for tipsquirrel.com. Don't forget to come over to the website, find out what all the other writers and video producers have been doing, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.